asked opportunities <coughs> in this portion. Um, just with minor retrofits, um, nothing that's super costly, um, Bright Power, which is an independent auditing company, estimates that you can have, that um, the average building will have an 18% reduction on energy use, 26% reduction on water use, and a 30% reduction in natural gas use. And all of these directly correlate into greenhouse gas reductions. Uh, so it's really just something that is too hard to pass up. This could have really huge gains for New York City. And really right now, this sector hasn't been addressed by New York City public policy. So our group decided to work a little magic and come up with three really great initiatives that could help reduce uh, the greenhouse gas emissions within the multifamily homes. So here are our three main initiatives. We have envelope repayment, sub-metering, and procedural organization. For the sake of time today, we're only going to be discussing ongoing repayment, but if you have any questions about the other two, feel free to ask us about them um, during our Q&A section. So to better explain ongoing repayment, we're going to take you to Chicago for a quick second to kind of show you a case study in which this program really worked. So in 2008, uh, the Energy Savers Program paired uh, with Elevate Energy, <coughs> an independent um, auditing and uh, an auditing community and in a community investment corporation to streamline the retrofitting process. Pretty much all an owner had to do was say, hi, Elevate Energy, I would like to retrofit my building. And they took care of everything else. It was a quick form that they filled out online and then finding auditors, finding out contractors, everything was done through the program. And the really big takeaway from this is that not only was there an average reduction of 30% um, for the natural gas use, so that's a huge reduction for each building. Uh, but also, it just really increased in, like, the incentive for owners to retrofit their buildings. And one of the main reasons this happened was because the Chicago program was able to streamline on-bill repayment. So you're probably thinking, what's on-bill repayment? So with on-bill repayment, usually with a retrofit, you would have to get an outside company uh, for a loan, and you'd have to pay all of these upfront costs. This kind of switches that. It's an unconventional loan. So a private company is going to pay for your retrofits, and instead of paying them back every month in a normal way, you're going to pay it through your incentives, or um, through your savings. So what happens is, say all of your utility bill is usually $100. After retrofits, it's only $60. With the uh, person loaning the money, you say, all right, I'm gonna give you half of uh, my savings each month. So you're still saving $20 each month, but $20 of your savings is going um, to pay off your loan. So really, you're continuously saving money and it doesn't really feel like you're paying back that loan even though you are. So this makes it a lot easier and less scary for building owners to retrofit um, their own units. Okay. Um, so what we are proposing today is um, a public-private partnership between NYSERDA and Bright Power. Um, to really create an online platform that would streamline this process so that owners could just go onto the next, the next start of website and figure it out where to find uh, a private organization to help them with on-bill repayment. Um, all the information would be in one place, which makes it much easier for building owners and very um, enticing to them. Uh, and the great thing is, my starter doesn't have to pay for any of the loans. They're just matching people up with the loans um, to help with the retrofits. So all they would have to pay to do is create this online platform with uh, Bright Power. Uh, so the, streamlined, the streamlining of on-bill repayment could be very effective in increasing retrofits and reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions within this subsector. And it also will reduce energy use and make buildings more fuel efficient, saving everyone money, which everyone loves. Okay, <laughs> so that's our plan for the private multifamily homes. Now Samir will take it away with our team's initiatives on New York City's one to two family homes. Right. Thank you, Laura. So why single family or one to two family homes? Well, as you can see from this pie chart, single family homes make up around 29% of the total housing stock in New York City. This is a sizable chunk of the total residential housing stock that could affect total greenhouse gas emissions. And furthermore, as you can see from this distribution, any strategy that targets this sector of the residential housing stock will have geographical equity attached to it as well. So what are some of the challenges and opportunities that surround single family homes? Well, as we can see from Plan NYC and One City Built to Last, there, sorry, <clears throat> there are not a lot of programs that actually target 
um, this sector, and most of them surround individual responsibilities, such as the Birdie mascot and Green NYC, which offers sustainability tips and energy efficiency, efficiency tips. However, that being said, there are opportunities within the sector. As you can see, there 65% of residents are owners, and owners have a, an investment that they want the greatest return upon. And furthermore, research on behavioral change has shown that small changes in energy bills can lead to savings in energy consumption. So what is the current model that we have in this sector? Well, the current model essentially is that the customer themselves ha themselves has to pay for the audit and then has to pay for the needed retrofits. And this highlights a need that is succinctly summarized by council member Stephen Levine, which says, some new model is needed to scale small buildings as opposed to the kind of audit intensive find your own financing. And this is precisely why we are proposing a, a public-private partnership that fosters behavioral change through a streamlined interface. interface. And we propose that there will be a public-private partnership between Con Edison, the local Manhattan and New York City utility company, and Opower, a utility company based in Virginia, um, that will incorporate behavioral change through social norms, through the use of smiley faces in energy bills. So we can see on the right side of um, So what you may ask, what does this look like? Well, it looks like this. On the left side, you can see the two. You can see the two parts of the energy bill. On the left side, you can see the monthly energy report with your comparison between yourself, efficient neighbors, and all neighbors. And on the right side, you can see your efficiency standing in a qualitative statement, such as great, good, and below average, with two smiles, one smiling, and no smiley attached to it. So on the, this specific energy bill, you can see that you are using less energy than efficient neighbors and less than all neighbors, and so you get a qualitative standing of great. In this one, you can see you are using more than efficient neighbors, but less than all neighbors, giving you an efficiency standing of good. And last but not least, in this one, you're using more than both efficient neighbors and all neighbors, and so you get a standing of below average. And the great part about this is that we will also be coupling this with terminologies such as quick fixes, smart purchases, and great investments, helped by visual aids to help the customer choose his or her efficiency standings. Um, the great part about this strategy is that these tools already exist in limited numbers across the USA in cities such as Seattle, Chicago, and Sacramento itself. Um, and you may also ask, does research back this up? Yes, it does. Research has shown in places such as Seattle, Chicago, and Sacramento, again, that this small cost-effective change within energy bills can lead to about a 2% uh, reduction in energy savings. Oh, sorry, a 2% reduction in energy consumption, which you may think does not sound like a lot, but when you map it on 29% of the total housing stock in your city, that can lead to great energy savings. And finally, uh, we have the research to back it up, and we can see that it has worked in other places, so now we just need to bring it to New York City. And the great part about that is that Opower, the company that we just spoke about, is already working with National Grid, another utility company within New York City, to help bring this to New York already. So we can see that there could be easy integration of the strategy within New York City. And with that being said, I'm going to hand it off over to Natalie. So now we've seen all of our initiatives laid out here on this slide. We have three different building types of residential buildings with three initiatives each that really create a comprehensive strategy to reduce energy use in residential buildings and reduce New York City's greenhouse gas emissions, which will lead to a real mitigation of climate change here in New York. As we remember from September, New York City is really a leader in terms of taking action against climate change. We hope to use the momentum started by things like the People's Climate March, where we can see Mayor de Blasio literally walking arm in arm with uh, Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General of the UN, marching for climate action. Uh, so that's already a big momentum that we want to follow, and we're going to take specific actions in order to mitigate climate change in New York City through beginning at home using residential buildings. And we wanted to just take a brief moment to thank the rest of our team, of course, and our wonderful instructor, Kizzy. And now, we'd like to bring our team up, and we're ready for your questions. Thanks for listening.